Ayan, all right. Okay, I'll just give it a few minutes before we begin. Sometimes uh, Zoom is sinking a little bit. So good afternoon to everyone. My name is Jay Agonoy. I'm with the online journal Keepsakes. And today we will be having special guests to discuss one special aspect of uh, information dissemination and to as well as inform and educate the public about the value of sign language in information dissemination, especially in these times. So I have with me our Mr. John Valisa from the Filipino Sign Language Access Team for COVID-19. Hello and good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, Jay. Good afternoon. All right. Uh, on uh, with him, uh, with John is Miss Yvette Aporado. She is a deaf person, and uh, she will be joining us through John's line over at his Viber. Hello to you as well, Miss Yvette. Okay. So she's saying. Okay, she's saying hello and good afternoon as well. All right. Uh, because of this right. quarantine period, we have a lot of restraints, especially in our movements. And uh, one important thing, as I've said earlier, is information dissemination. So uh, while we're... Uh, I think uh, Ms. Yvette is also now on the chat. Uh, on the Zoom meeting. So uh, once we're settled, uh, we will begin asking, uh, this is a list of six questions uh, that, that involves the viewer, the deaf, as well as the interpreter, the one who's communicating, especially at the time uh, where information dissemination is very crucial in uh, informing the public about the hazards of COVID-19 about the government guidelines. And uh, more than that is how we can get the message to everyone, including the deaf. So I guess we can, John, we can start asking questions. Yes, yeah, sure. All right. Okay, so I'll start uh, with Miss Yvette. Uh, okay, uh, the first question would be, as a viewer, does the lack of Filipino sign language interpreters make it difficult for the deaf to understand the news and make proper decisions? Ah, yes, that's very true, no? Um, it is true. Uh, especially without the interpreter inset on television, it's uh, it's a very challenging for us to really understand what is being said um, on television on the news. And so, usually, what we do is ask our family members or our friends or relatives. But sometimes the information we get from them is not enough. It's very uh, limited. Okay, again, because of the uh, well, not all family members would know sign language, and so. Uh, it's very important, so it's a necessity for us to have an uh, interpreter inset so that we understand fully and completely what is being uh, said on the news. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, that is Miss Yvette and uh, being interpreted by John, by the way. So, uh, this question goes for Miss Yvette and John as well. Um, as a viewer, uh, okay, let, let me check, okay. Second question would be for the viewer and the interpreter. Why is there a need for Filipino sign language interpreters in information dissemination? So this is Yvette um, answering again. Um, well, it is very important for the deaf community and... Um, because uh, 
well again because they are not able to access information through their uh you know because they they don't they, they are not able to hear so it's not only information on on news but all like all sorts of information in, in healthcare um in in whatever dealings that they have with the community so it's very important that they should understand what is going on and that's why uh interpreter plays a crucial role in, in reaching that uh communication gap as for you john so it's my turn man. yes your turn yeah um for for me man, as an interpreter yeah it's the same perspective as uh you know, the deaf people uh interpreters are very uh, important because well it's not only that they help like bridge the communication gap between the deaf and hearing but also uh, interpreters sort of like uh, uh, like cultural ambassadors because sometimes hearing people don't understand the uh, yung, yung culture of the deaf people in the same way that deaf people don't really fully understand what the hearing culture and, and those are two different things so um, it's not only about the language but it's also about you know um, making sure that the cultures of both the hearing and the deaf would try to be, uh, um, you know, try to, 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 to blend as, as, uh, as easily as possible and, you know, try to, to make it uh, as harmonious as possible. Um, so, yeah, that's why interpreters are very, very important. Thank you very much, uh, John and Miss Yvette. Uh, okay, uh, let's go to the perspective of uh, interpreters. So I'll be asking John again another question. In this time, where the social video app TikTok is making waves, how can we tell the uninformed about the crucial role of sign language, any sign language aside from Filipino sign language? Well, um, so I think that's the, that was the incident that happened maybe like, uh, like two days ago where you know, some people like mock our interpreters on, on television. Instead. Yes. Um, primarily because I think it's the lack of awareness. Maybe that's a novelty. Because it's a new thing that the first time that they saw uh, a TV inset. Um, and so you know, maybe for, you know, for the benefit of some, some likes or you know, trying to be uh, you know, famous, they make fun. They make fun of the interpreting community uh, without these people realizing that it's not only the interpreting community that they are affecting, but it's also the deaf community. Okay, um, In a way, yes, it, it is insulting for the interpreters, but more importantly, it's, uh, I would say, oppressing, oppressive okay, for the deaf community. Um, usually they would see us doing a lot of signing on, on the inset without them realizing that it's actually a language. We're not just like inventing signs. We're not just inventing movements like what we do on TikTok, right? Um, but this is a real language. Uh, Filipino sign language is a real language that is um, you know, owned by the deaf community. And so for, for, for these people to... To, uh, to, 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 mock, to mock interpreters, to mock uh, FSL, it's like saying that they're also mocking, you know, uh, a, a very natural language. And it's mocking, you know, the community who owns that language. So I'm just hoping there would be more understanding and there would be more respect coming from, from these people. Thank you very much, John. So uh, to recap, basically, uh, this is communicating to the deaf. It's not just hand movements. It's not just uh, gestures. It's communicating to the deaf community. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I think this question can be answered by either John or Ms. Yvette. Uh, is there a difference between Filipino sign language and the sign language used in other countries?
Yes, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, well, here in the Philippines, uh, we have our own sign language, which is Filipino sign language. Okay? It is a, a, a very unique language. It's 100% uh, uniquely uh, for Filipino deaf community. And so, um, like for example, Yvette is signing this. Uh, this is the Filipino sign language for thank you. Okay. Um, in, Jap in Japanese sign language, they would sign thank you this way. Um, so, like, um, uh, uh, in the Philippines, uh, the sign for sister and brother would be like this. But in Japan, they would sign it differently. Okay. A sister would be signed like this. So I'm copying Miss um, Yvette signing. And brother would be signed like this. Okay. So that's the Japanese sign language for brother. Okay. Mm. So how in Filipino sign language, so, how does sister and brother... Uh, uh, how does, uh, yeah. Well, here in the Philippines, uh, this is brother. Brother. And right. this is sister. Okay. But in right. Japan, they have a different sign altogether mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the same way that uh, we have our own alphabet in Filipino sign language in Australia, for example, in uh, Australian sign language, they would use a different uh, hand shape for the sign language, like A, B, C, D. But here in the Philippines, we use A, B, C, D. So uh, as you can see, like, there, they, they, there are two very distinct languages. And all over the world, uh, most countries, uh, they have their own sign languages. And I would also like to add to that, uh, yes, uh, Filipino Sign Language is very unique. So it's, uh, just want to clarify that FSL, it's not related to the spoken Filipino. Okay, hindi siya, hindi siya Tagalog. Uh, because many people thought, ah, FSL meaning Tagalog yan, no. Okay. Uh, spoken Tagalog or spoken Filipino is very different. Like, uh, grammatically, structurally, uh, there are two different uh, languages altogether. Okay, FSL is a visual language; it has its own structure. Um, and yes, it's true. There's no such thing as an international sign language. Okay, so as uh, Ms. Yvette mentioned, like each country, they would have their own uh, sign languages. Why? Because it's it's deeply rooted to to their own cultures. Okay, so here in the Philippines, even even here in the Philippines. Uh, we do have like sub subsets of Filipino sign language. Like there would be, you would you would notice like regional variation. So like deaf people from from Manila may be signing a little bit differently from deaf people. Like for example, in in the Visayas or in the Now. Okay, um, and also um, there's also what we call like the Betty signs, like gay signs. So that's, it's not a, a, a language on its own, but it's sort of uh, it's an offshoot of Filipino sign language. So uh, the LGBT deaf community actually, uh, you know, um, created their own sort of signals or codes that only them could understand. Just like, just like in spoken language, we have, we have our general Filipino, but the LGBT hearing, hearing community would have their own like Bekinis. So, um, yeah, it's a very interesting language. So, um, yeah, there's, there's no such thing as an international sign. Uh, okay. Um, usually, how, because of all this sign language, usually, how long does it take to learn the Filipino sign language? Was it weeks, days? So uh, this is a bad answering. Well, um, it could vary, okay? It could vary from person to person. Again, it's the capacity of a person of learning a language. If the person is able to grasp the, you know, the, the structure, the linguistic features of FSL, maybe it would be easier for them to understand and, and uh, you know, understanding the, the rules of grammar of FSL. Um, so... Um, but for, for there are 
like even for deaf people, uh, we could not assume that they are born already knowing sign language. They also have to 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 to, to learn, you know, the the formal signs uh, as soon as they 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 start in school. But uh, you know, if they are born deaf, they don't have FSL yet as part of them. So, um, I just like to add, as a hearing person, um. It's, it will take many years to learn sign language. Uh, again, just like like any any language, uh, it's continuously like evolving. Um, so it doesn't mean that okay, uh, I learned sign language for one year, and and that's it. No, because like for maybe next month there would be new signs, you know, uh, added to the vocabulary of FSL. Okay, just like what happened now during this. Uh, during this uh, COVID crisis, uh, like we don't have, the, we don't have established science yet for many of the technical words that they are using now on television news. So what what we did in, in the team of the FSL access team, uh, we have a deaf consultants there who came together and discussed uh, and analyzed, you know, the meaning of certain words uh, that they are using on TV, and then they agreed to you know to establish some. Some uh, are you know arbitrary sign for for uh, like technical words. Uh, so Yvette is adding uh, like Filipino sign language. They would have again regional variations, um, and we actually publish a book um, wherein it's a compilation of of uh, like different uh, vocabularies all over the Philippines on FSL. And it also includes um, idioms, idiomatic expressions. So it could vary okay, from region to region. Um, yeah, there are certain uh, communities here in the Philippines who would be who might be signing differently. And uh, we are hoping that uh, we could continue with this project because again, uh, it's uh, well, language is evolving. And in order to preserve this language, we have to make sure that um, all of these are being documented. Exactly. Okay. Um, uh, well, we move on to the next question. Uh, okay. So um, this is uh, I, this is I believe an important question for everyone who is interested to communicate with the deaf. Why should everyone learn the Filipino sign language? And uh, how does it affect the communication between the hearing and the deaf? So this is Yvette again. Uh, yeah, signing. Well, it goes both ways for hearing and deaf people. Um, well, as I have mentioned, Filipino sign language is a very rich language. And in order for the two cultures, the two communities, hearing and deaf, to understand each other, uh, we first need to realize that uh, Filipino sign language uh, should be recognized as a, you know, equal of equal status with other spoken languages. So that's the first step. Okay. Um, so and in addition to what Ms. Yvette was saying, um, I think because, well, there's a huge communication gap between hearing and the deaf. And, um, you know, if we really want to, you know, if we want to make the Philippines uh, an inclusive community, an inclusive country, uh, I think the, the first step is for us to, to learn, you know, the language of the deaf. Um, because for, for so long, they have been excluded, uh, again, because they don't have access to information. Uh, deaf people, um, parang us hearing people have set a lot of barriers okay, to communication, to information. And so um, if us hearing people would be able to learn um, you know, sign language, FSL, then that means breaking down those barriers and making sure that we we achieve that goal of being an inclusive country. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, last question for both uh, John and Miss Yvette. 
why we should not discriminate against the deaf and the Filipino sign language interpreters by dismissing sign language as some form of mimicry. Like for example, how some regard FSLS TikToking, mere TikToking. How, why we should not do that? So this is Yvette again signing. Uh, as I have mentioned, Filipino sign language uh, is something that should not be made fun of. Okay, it's a it's a it's a crucial and a vital component of our deaf community. Okay, so uh, if that is if that is the way um, if that is how they would treat you know the language you know making fun of the language. Um, then that 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 would mean that uh, you know our rights as human beings are not being respected and recognized. Um, it doesn't mean that because we are using a different language that we are uh, like second class citizens. Okay, um, but you know being able to respect and recognize the language and the culture and the identity of the deaf people and you know, making us uh, be part of the bigger society, of the bigger community, okay? then that means that um, these people should afford, you know, the respect that deaf people and the interpreters uh, deserve. And so that is why And that is why we actually have some. Uh, we actually have a leg legislation, uh, the Filipino Sign Language Act, uh, that would promote, you know, the usage of FSL uh, all over the country, as well as the recognition of, of of you know FSL as a natural language of equal status to other spoken languages in the Philippines. All right. Okay. So to recap everything, uh, Filipino Sign Language interpreters are important in disseminating or sh sharing information. This is why the deaf community has fought so much to include Filipino Sign Language interpreters in newscasts and even in the city of Manila, they have a Filipino Sign Language interpreter there for every Facebook Live that they do. So uh, props for the city of Manila for being inclusive uh, and yes the filipino sign language is not TikTok. it's not meant to be mocked it's not it's not something that people will dismiss as some form of mimicry and in the context of sign language worldwide there are unique sign languages for every country and as with language it evolves so that's why it's important for people who are interested in learning sign language to understand it. And it's basically a commitment, John, am I correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, well, for us, it's a, it's a lifelong commitment. So yes, you really, it's not only about learning a language, but it's more about uh, learning about a group of people, learning about uh, the culture you know, of the deaf people. Right. Uh, that said, thank you very much to John Baliza, our interpreter from the Filipino Sign Language Access. Oh, sorry, um, Miss. Yes? Sorry. Sorry, Jay. If it was, uh, would like to add something. Yes, please. Yes, uh, please. Yes. Uh, in, in terms of educating Yes, in terms of uh, the labels that we use to address deaf people, uh, yeah, we, we, um, they would prefer to be called deaf uh, with a big D. So that's big D, E-E-A-F, rather than calling them hearing impaired. So that's, uh, uh, that's the deaf-friendly term. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right, um, I'll give the floor again to uh, John and Miss Yvette for their parting words for this conversation. So this is from Yvette. Um, well, for for the hearing people, I, it's very sad to see what happened with regard to the TikTok incident. Uh, but then again, I'm hoping that there would be more respect towards um, us deaf people, towards our community, our language, and our culture. Uh, and we are hoping that instead of you, um, you know, mocking um, our language, I'm hoping that we could just all work together. Uh, that these interpreters are really working, working very hard to ensure we we get access to uh, to information. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, we would try to do our part in cherishing this, uh, in making sure that uh, we we take care of each other uh, again. Respect begets respect. So uh, recognize that having this access is our basic right. And so um, we're hoping that everyone will be more aware about that and would be more understanding. Thank you. So that's from this event. Uh, for me, uh, yes. Um, well, FSL is it's it's not it's not uh, it's not a laughing matter. It's, it's it's something very serious, especially now during COVID, uh, that we have. Um, it, it's difficult as it because like for most interpreters we are so uh, overwhelmed by you know doing the news interpreting on television and then having to respond but to this uh, to the to the to the incident of TikTok it's it's parang our, our plates are already so full so I'm just hoping that for hearing people who um, well, if, if, if they can be of any help to the deaf community, I'm just hoping that they would be added problems. Okay. Uh, so just just be respectful, just be more sensitive and be more mindful uh, that what we are we are doing on television is, is something serious. So it could it, it could actually mean you know life or death for the deaf community. So um, and, and, and and honestly, we, we have some of our interpreters who are well. The, what what happened in the bullying on, on online um, actually impacted them, like like mentally, emotionally. So we are there. There are very few interpreters left now. Like very limited now. Your number of interpreters, and I'm hoping that we uh, instead of bullying them, instead of you know mocking them that we could just be more supportive, especially during this time, during the COVID crisis. So. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Again, John Baliza from the Filipino Sign Language Access Team with Miss Yvette Aparado from our Deaf community. And I would like to give special thanks to Daniela Trisha Tabihe and Hello Mirai for heeding my call to have our research speakers, they are the reasons that we meet together in this conversation, despite the technical difficulties, despite the time constraints, despite the uh, almost impossible schedule, they gave time to, to be with us on this conversation. And uh, with respect to them, we will be recording, uh, we'll be, uh, we've been, as we finish recording this, this conversation will be posted right away on our Facebook page. And I'll be writing a story about this on my website. That's jagonoid.xyz. So most of the time, you will be, it's, it's not focused on me, it's focused on John as the interpreter because we may have an audience from the deaf community, especially that we need to inform the uninformed, the hearing, that FSL is no laughing matter. It's serious and it's a matter of life and death. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you.
And uh, this won't be the, the last conversation that we'll be having, John. Yes, yes, definitely. And anytime, sir. Yes. yes, all right. Thank you so much for, for having us here. All right. The Filipino Sign Language Access Team for COVID-19 is, uh, what's the URL again? Sorry, John. Um, we actually are on Facebook, so we have a Facebook uh, group. So it's uh, FSL Access Team uh, dash 19. So you could just look us up on Facebook. All right. Okay. So with that said, uh, thank you very much. And we will see you in our next video. For now, stay safe, keep safe, always wash your hands, and always follow the guidelines. All right, okay, stop recording. Okay.